Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm Duke Silver. Today we're going to be playing on the beta. So the beta has uh, quite a few changes. There's a bunch of new characters and some new heroes. Um, we're going to be checking out the Wayward Sisters today. So this is a hero that, um, it's a, it's a spell-based hero. So basically what, uh, what Wayward Sisters says is whenever you cast a spell on your shop, it casts it on the whole shop. And uh, in addition to that, anything that costs zero, like starting at level two, if it costs zero, it, it gets cast again. So that's why we're going to buy an owl here, cast this uh, sweet oranges on the shop. It's going to double cast on the shop and give us two, uh, two triggers on our uh, on our owl there. And also we lock the uh, the food stats onto those characters. Um, and yeah, so so and basically that uh, that value goes up by one every turn. So like at, on level three, things that cost one will get double cast. On level four, things that cost two, uh, spell cost reduction, of course, uh, can help you here. Um, and also this is a new character you can see on the right there. That's Hot Potato, which uh, basically it just says if you sell it this round or the following round, you get to sell it for two gold instead of just one. Also some new art. I'm not sure if you saw the uh, the Elaine art on the left side there. And also there was a new character on the right side of the opponent's board. Um, also, here's another new character. This is a uh, rose in a jar or something like that. Um, and what it's a it's a furniture or, or no, no, it's not furniture. It's a it's a treant. I, I think it's a treant for some reason. Um, anyways, it's just a flower in a jar. And uh, so what it does is basically when it breaks or, or dies, it casts uh, casts uh, blizzard. So it's like a it's like a, a sort of a budget um, a budget book mage, um, which is I think it's really really good for uh, for uh, for owls because I found that owls are just like not very reliable right now. Um, like I haven't haven't really had much success taking them, um, and I think uh, I think I think if this uh, if this jar goes goes to live, I think it's gonna really help the uh, help the apprentice owls early anyways. Not to mention makes uh, makes yellow barks a little bit more reliable. Speaking of, looks like we got one there, and I think I am gonna take it. Um, I mean, just add. I mean, we're getting just like some attack scaling on our whole board with our uh, with our with our, our flower jar here. So I think that's worth it. Um, we're gonna go ahead and double cast onto. Uh, or we're gonna go ahead and cast cast. I guess it's not double cast because it costs two there. Um, but yeah, we're gonna cast a spell on our shop, which is gonna. I guess I didn't really need to cast it on the shop since it it doesn't get double cast. But uh, but anyways, I did I did anyways. We cast the the spell onto the uh, onto the pirate gunner in the shop and then buy it and then we find a triple. Unfortunately, we don't find our spell treasure that we would have liked here. Uh, and we're gonna take the anvil and just basically hope to pick up some spell books and just bank a bunch of gold. Um, I I mean Chrono Crystal and Simple Dagger are also like arguably fine. I mean Chrono Crystal of course is just like a safe treasure to take. Um, dagger, we do have a, a big range, and also a little, the startings of some summons to uh, to make use of it. Um, we do find a sp find a spell book here, nice and early, and we're gonna we're gonna double cast this time and get this uh, um, Elaine here. And uh, Elaine does have new art. I'm not sure if uh, you may you may have seen it by now, but uh, but yeah, that is the new uh, new art for Elaine. We take a take some damage here, unfortunately, leaving the opponent at one. We're gonna take the three pair and also the book mage that we locked. And we're going to be very happy to just have a book mage as well as the jar to uh, to keep getting uh, keep getting scaling onto our uh, onto our apprentice owls. I think we're done with the yellow barks now. They just don't provide enough on board. I think. Although I, I should probably get out of this uh, this crew member to be honest and just play a full board. So that might be just that just might be a mistake. Either way, we win that combat. We're going to con con continue taking all the one cost items, of course. Um. And yeah, you can see there's some new art. There's some uh, the new art there um, on the four cost unit. Uh, that's Long John Silver, which was previously Sinbad. And we are out of the uh, we are out of the crew member now. It's only the one summon. Definitely not even worth the uh, worth the time anymore. I don't think. And then we roll into a shop with uh, with a couple triples, and we're gonna go for the three treasure first, hoping for a spell treasure. We don't find it, but I think we're gonna take the magic bean. And my intention here was to lock the uh, well, lock the apprentice owl and hope to find like a hat. Or a, or a seer sphere for next turn, but um, fortunately, uh, Carol wisely in chat pointed out that uh, that I should probably just look for narcs instead, because we are on level five, and a level six treasure seems a lot better than hoping for a level three spell treasure. And yeah, we're not going to take that spell book. We don't want to take the two cost spell book. We just want to look for uh, for level five characters. I mean, Crystal Sage would also be very good. 
we are uh, are going to cast some spells on the shop there. And here's a new spell. There's also the the character that I just uh, I just kind of moused over is uh, is it bears a very striking resemblance to one of my favorite characters from uh, from SBB. It is uh, it is basically uh, uh, wombats in disguise. Um, but sorry, the spell I shouldn't have glossed over this. The spell is very important. It's uh, definitely busted. It's uh, it's fairy dust. It gives a character plus four plus four permanently and also flying permanently, which is uh, when I when I realized that it was permanent, like my mind was a little bit blown because that just seems far far too powerful, especially for only five gold. Um, so hopefully that'll get changed to uh, to maybe being like a temporary thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're, we're gonna make use of it for now while uh, since it's available to us uh, I don't want to get a level 5 treasure here. So we're not gonna get this book made triple I mean we again, we just want to find a six and hey, there's a narc for us, which we are happily gonna take There's a spell on the shop that we can also cast uh, either on the board or on the on the shop for a little bit of scaling If I was gonna I mean if I was gonna cast on the shop, I probably should have cast it first so I just decided not to, not to spend the gold, because like the plus two plus two, honestly, the the, the scaling from uh, from a single single spell isn't worth it. And I know like the, the spell goes on the whole shop, so like you might you might assume that you get uh, a spell trigger for each of the characters in the shop, but unfortunately, no, it it only does get cast twice. It just ca it's cast on the entire shop once, and then the entire shop once again. So that is only two spell triggers. Um, there's a golden fluff, so new new fluff alert. Uh, some people are very excited about that. Unfortunately, it is bugged right now. Um, but also, we get our Narc Triple, and we're going to take Merlin's Staff, which is uh, which has been improved significantly. Um, before, I think it was really, really out of place on level six, and now it actually feels like a like an actual Mage Engine, which uh, I'm a big fan of. I think it's a pretty good change. Um, it still has the old text. Every spell you cast, you cast it again, and then but this time it has a, a counter. So every five spells that you buy, important to note that spell it spells you buy. Um, see, so you see the counter there. Uh, once you get to five, you get refunded one mana, as well as you get uh, you get a rummage uh, added to your shop, which is really, really good. So I mean, you get you get to roll a whole whole new shop uh, full of spells as well after uh, after that. So you get any kind of spell cost reduction, and yeah, you can uh, you can just start to machine gun out spells with just a single tre treasure, really. I mean, I guess you do need some extra mana. Like you don't get any extra mana from Merlin's. Uh, Merlin staff, so finding that extra mana is important, but but also like um, again the, the mana does get you do kind of get one mana out of it. Uh, speaking of mana, we do find Odin's Ravens, which is going to give us that all important mana and spell cost reduction here. So we are very happy to see that, and that's going to allow us to start uh, start really going off with our spells here. I think we're going to take this uh, this spell book here. It gives plus two plus two per cast, so it seems uh. Seems worth it to me. Just deciding whether we want to cast it on the shop for that one extra trigger, or if we want to, uh, if we want to just cast it on the board. It's probably more worth it to just cast it on the board. Like that one extra trigger probably doesn't matter as far as scaling goes. And anyway, we got our rummage there, and we're gonna lock a shop full of spells. We would really like to see a uh, what do you call it? The Crystal Sage at some point. Also, that new art on the left there—that is in the new uh, the new Merlin art. Um, and yeah, we do we do take out the Kiv there, so we even reduce their power by a ton. And that's a uh, shout out to Cancel who was uh, who was sniping from chat as well. Um, but yeah, we do reduce their power a ton, but still uh, still manage to take a loss. So we do have some catching up to do here in this uh, in this lobby. But yeah, like I said, we can we can really start to machine gun spells now that we've got a. Uh, We've got this Odin's Ravens, and we can we can we can basically just cast mul we can uh, cast multiple rummage spells per turn, and obviously spells that uh, that refund their mana do count towards your uh, your your uh, your Merlin's staff count. There's another Kiv comp that uh, went out a little bit earlier, so definitely not keeping pace with the lobby here, and we. Win that one convincingly, at least. We picked up a Hecate last turn as well, and we get a second one here. Grim's Twist, really, really good on this hero, because we just get to reroll our whole shop with uh, with some extra spells, with some extra stats, like basically plus six, plus six to uh, to our whole whole shop, and uh, and they're all rerolled. So that's very nice. Unfortunately, nothing here that we really want to take, but 
when you uh, when you are looking for direction, it's uh, it's a lot more exciting. We finally find our crystal sage, and we're gonna happily take that. And once again, I could I could just reroll that golden five and hope for a crystal sage, but instead I reroll the whole shop, and we get paid off with another crystal sage that has uh, has some uh, Grim's twist uh, stats there, and also we get our rummage, and so we can cast uh, cast some more spells here. And yeah, you can see our scaling really taking off. Like again, I think this uh, this Merlin staff change is really really good for mages. It actually makes Merlin staff actually uh, feel like a treasure worth taking on mages, rather than just like a way way over costed uh, spell doubler or whatever level four forking rod treasure. And there's another flying spell. I think we are going to take that. Giving a second character flying seems pretty good to me. We'll put it on the Hecate, I think. There's our rummage again, which we are gonna, of course, burn. And we get another rummage, why not? Keep uh, keep getting these uh, spells that refund mana and just allow us to uh, to really, really chain here. We've gotten a ton of stats off of that spell book. You can see the difference in the size between, uh, between, between our position 1 Owl and our position 5 Owl. Uh, we go for a hero change, hoping for uh, for something that's going to be uh, a little bit better. Like, I mean, Hercules would be really good. Uh, Savitri would be good. We're not exactly super healthy. Um, uh, I would think we would take Merlin, which actually Merlin Merlin's name has changed. Just uh, just so you're aware, the Merlin is now Morgan Le Fay. And once again, uh, once again, we lose to uh, to Cancel's uh, powerful Kiv comp here. Fortunately, they don't have. Uh, they don't have the Divine Messenger, so that is gives us some hope. We do need to uh, to improve our board, and I think even though we have two flying characters, I think we still want to take this Fire Mage. We can scale it really, really fast with this book and uh, and this Merlin staff. And we are going to do we are going to do just that. Just cast a flurry of spells onto it, get it over a hundred attack very, very easily. We don't want to give it flying. We don't want it attacking the back line. We want it to hit the front line, of course. Uh, I think we want to cast the hero spell or the hero change spell once again. Take another crack at uh, at something. Um, just considering what other spell we want to cast, because we can cast one more before we have to cast it. And uh, and yeah, we have we have the choice between Hercules and CV Tree. Probably the two two of the better picks. And I do go with the Hercules. I mean, we've got a ton of permanent stats. It doubles the power on our uh, on our fire mage, making it pretty much uh, able to kill anything in the lobby. I think at this point. Um, and also, of course, the uh, the two owls get uh, get a significant boost in stats. And we've got one more uh, hero proc to go still. All right, and here's a bug on the beta right now. So uh, unfortunately, if you cast the fairy dust onto something and then triple it, it does uh, it does desync the game. But um, thanks to uh, to someone in chat, I, uh, we did learn that you can uh, you can lock and unlock the shop to uh, to resync the back end of the. Uh, of the game so we just have to do that a couple times and it's going to reload a couple times and we are eventually going to get to the to our, our uh, board state that we're supposed to be at here fortunately we didn't have to didn't have to re-log and spend that time and that'll work for uh pretty much any i think it works for any uh any desync bug anyways although it's hard to tell exactly which which ones those are but but it's always worth just locking and unlocking if you're not sure all right, yeah, we got that. We got a very large Hecate. There's another Hecate in the shop, but I don't think I want to lock it here. I think we're just gonna gonna let it let it go. I think um, mostly we just want to find. Uh... Um, wait, what do we also want to find? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe maybe Hecate would have been fine. I don't. But it doesn't really play on board over anything. I guess we kind of want to find uh, this this owl or this uh, this wolf. The wolf bait is nice. Um, tripling this uh, this owl would be really nice. Uh, combining those stats would be good. We really want to find a demon's deal to uh, to proc our hero power once again, because that would be a huge, huge boost in stat. Um, normally, I would just to go for the wolf on Hecate there, but because it has flying, I, I want it to be able to attack uh, as efficiently as possible. So, um, so we go uh, we go for the the. the Sorry, the wolf on uh, on our Elaine there, which has a bunch of attack. Elaine's not going to be able to scale, whereas Hecate would be able to scale inside the uh, the wolf. But I think that's fine. Um, once again, we just have to resync because uh, because we put fairy fairy dust on one of our uh, on one of our owls and then and then tripled it. 
Uh, we're running out of time here, but we're going to be able to cast a, a combat spell for the end. And we take out the Uther immediately, just like completely nerfing uh, cancel stats here and, uh, and get the win without having to pop out our lane there. So yeah, there we go. I think uh, I think mages get a really significant boost um, in a couple of ways, as I, as I pointed out here. Um, yeah, there's like, like I said, there's a lot of changes. I didn't go over a lot a lot of them, just kind of the ones that uh, that we saw that I was uh, familiar with from from the the one stream that I did. Um, there's a lot of a lot of stuff that's like really out of place. A lot of stuff that's just kind of just feels kind of tacked on. Um, but there are there are some some uh, some highlights I think. And, uh, and yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully whatever makes it to live will be, uh, will be either adjusted to, uh, to make sense or, uh, or it'll be just, uh, just the good ideas anyways. I guess that's why feedback is important. Um, but yeah. Anyway, sorry I've been away a bit with the FTF stuff. I've been, uh, I've been, I've been trying to make some, some other, some short form content for some, uh, some retro games and whatnot. Um. And yeah, I've been kind of having fun with that, and honestly, I just like, I haven't really felt super motivated to play FTF lately, so, um, yeah, but I figured I should, uh, should at least give y'all a look into the beta. I think we might have one more, one more, uh, one more beta game to put out, so, uh, yeah, look forward to that, I guess. Um, but yeah, if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Uh, please remember to like, uh, comment, and subscribe, and all that stuff. Uh, I would very, very much appreciate it. I hope, again, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Uh, and I'll see you next time.